Yeah, we live. All right, we're good. All right. Dalam, first and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Yahweh Shai, Kodash. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. My name is Shalaman. I'm here with the brother Ashiyah. And uh, through the spirit, I uh, had this in my mind for a while uh, to do a lesson with this brother, uh, to go through Joel, the second chapter. But for me, I like visualization. I'm a movie guy as well, so I like watching movies. And sometimes movies help, you know, visualize what the uh, scripture is saying. So I yeah, all right. Salakia, the sound is kind of like a little bit your voice. Oh, it's chopping again? Now it's good. Now it's good. I don't know why I keep doing that. Damn it. Yeah, I see. All right, but I'll say it again. But um, I like watching movies, and uh, visualization helps me to, you know, pretty much uh, helps me to visualize what the scriptures are saying. So for Joel, the second chapter, I have a clip here from Independence Day and another clip from uh, Troy to just give you a visualization of what Joel is saying when uh, the prophecy that is in Joel, the second chapter. Just to give you a visualization, like, oh, okay. Because you, know, you read the scriptures, you see things, certain wording and things like that can be a little confusing. So sometimes using movies and things like that, modern things that we're seeing today, can help give you a visualization. Because sometimes words is not enough. Sometimes words and pictures help. That's why, you know, it may sound childish, but like, you know, kids with the coloring books, that's why it has like, not just words, but pictures as well. You know, bring things to life. <coughs> If you have anything to say, but then we could just go right into it. Uh, yeah, right into it. No, no, not this. Not, uh, say, say it again? No, let's go to uh, Joel 2 at first. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. All right. Uh, Joel 2 started from the top. Yeah. Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Right, and that's what we're doing when we go out there on the highways and byways. We're blowing the trumpet. The trumpet is what and is alarm, right? So when we out there on the highways and byways, we say, what we speak with a loud voice, and that is what an alarm to give the alarm to the people to say, "Yo, danger is coming!" Right? Like it says in um, Ezekiel three and seventeen, "Give them warning for me." What is the warning that destruction is coming? Whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. But all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Right. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. I believe that's, um, why am I forgetting now? I believe that's Amos, the fifth chapter, and I think like the 17th verse or the 18th verse, where it says the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Uh, what is the day? Uh, a warrant to you that seek the day of the Lord. What is it to you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So a lot of people think that when the Lord comes back, who they ignorantly call Jesus, they think that it's all going to be sun, sunshines and think everything's going to be all good. But no, the day of the Lord is darkness. It's a terrible day. And many times when you read that, it likens the day of the Lord unto a dark day and not a good day at all when the Lord comes back. That's right. Yeah, you can continue. You continue. All right. You want me to get that Amos 5 real quick, or you want to just keep going? Yeah, you can get that Amos, yeah. Yep, this is uh, Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day. Share a tab. Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. We can read uh, verse, uh, yeah, verse 19 as well. Mm -hmm. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Right. Now, uh, can we get that? I think it's either the amplified version or the NLT version. Because there's a wording the way it says it there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it's which one it is. God damn it. Stop calling Yeah. Me. It says, escaping from the bear, he leans his hand against the wall in his house. Is that it? No, I think it's the amplified. Amplified, man. Which one is the ampli? Oh, the ampli. Yeah, it's like an ampli. It says as uh, five and nineteen, Amos five and nineteen in the amp, the amp amplified. It is as if a man runs from a lion, escaping one danger, and a bear meets him, so he dies anyway. 
Right. So that's how the day of the Lord is going to be. You're going to be running from one peril to the next peril. Here it is. You're running from a bear, let's say. Right. So to speak. That's the one peril. Then you go into the lion. So it's like, damn, I just went from this. Now this even crazier thing, because th don't get twisted. Seeing some clips, them bears is fast. Uh, mm -hmm. You may think that big thing. Uh, it's not. Them niggas is fast, right? So you go from one danger, then to the next danger, and then you may go into some place that you think is safe, which is the home or house. But then what? There's another danger. There. Something that may not be as big as a lion or a bear, but something so small the serpent comes to bite you, and then you die. So that's what the day of the Lord is going to be like. It's going to go from one peril to the next. That's why I like what it says there. It says escaping one danger. You're going from one danger to the next. You might be like, ah, all right, I escaped it. No, nah, you, you're getting ready to go into the next peril. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and they're going to escape all these perils. And then the serpent is going to be there to bite them with the MOTB. You're running from them perils and they're going to they're gonna run into some kind of, you know, they're going to run into all different obstacles and perils and troubles. And eventually, the peril that they're dealing with is going to cause them to take that snake bite, you know, Cut. which is likely unto any type of danger. But just for visualization sake, I'm giving, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, helping the, those of you out there for edification sake to imagine that that's what it's like. You getting that you getting that MOTB, you getting that that device implanted inside of you. All right. That's like unto you escaping different perils and then you just going to get bit by a snake anyways. All right, read in the 20th verse, will not the day of Yahweh be darkness instead of light, even very dark with no brightness in it? Yeah, so yeah, the Lord, the day of the Lord is not what these people think it's going to be. You know, the day of the Lord, and that's why when we tell people about the end time, we'll be like, man, that's scary, that's scary. Like, I don't want to think about that, I don't want to think about that, but, and it is scary, but the thing is, that is the day of the Lord, that is the day where the heavenly father sent his son Yahweh Shai back. So we desire that day. It doesn't make it any less fearful, but for us, we desire it. And we don't fear um, because we believe that the Lord is going to deliver us. The fear of the Lord drives us. But yeah, it, it, and even with that being said, it's still going to be a fearful time. You know, because the fear of the Lord is in us. We fear him and we fear his judgment. We know that we need to be in his good graces to escape. You see, but that day is going to be very dark with no brightness in it. And we're going to get into that with uh, Joel, the second chapter, so we can jump back. And I'll read on Joel 2 and 1. It says, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. Right. So the way Joel is speaking of us, imagine just in your mind. You know, like sometimes when it's about to rain, what happens? The clouds and everything come around. Or like, you know, you may watch those cartoons when the character's having a bad day, right? And the clouds come around, it gets mad dark, the sun goes away, then you hear the thunder and the lightning, the tsh and all that type of stuff. That's pretty much what the day of the Lord is going to be like. That's what Joel is explaining to you. Just to use a cartoon, you know, ex explanation. So it's going to be a dark day. It's not going to be a bright day as people talk about it. You know, if you go into a church, people always think like, oh, when Jesus comes back, it's going to be this. Ah. Nah, it's not going to be that. It's going to be the complete opposite. And many different prophets talk about the day of the Lord being like this. That's right. That's right. It's going to, it's going to be a day of, of doom. You know, the scriptures talks about the prophets of doom. We prophesy about the return of the Lord. The return of the Lord is going to be a day where billions of people die on earth okay so yeah it is a fearful day you know and that's why that is what um dictates our our behavior that is what um is is the driving force of why we're doing the things we do so you'd be like well yeah man y'all y'all don't celebrate no holidays y'all don't do this y'all don't do that yeah because we know that the lord hates those things so we stay away from those things. You know, we just had the whole Halloween thing. Sam, hey, why, why do you think we stay away from that? You know, we teach our children. We, 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 we you know, we try to tell our families they don't want to listen, but we, we serve the Lord for us, man, at the end of the day. You know, my father always said that, hey, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of nobody. So we got to be focused on our own salvation. Scripture says, um, you know what I'm talking about, Philippians. 
your own salvation with fear and trembling? Kind, kind. Let me see if I can get that for you. Oh, yeah. So, so, you know, all of these things that's happening in, in terms of these worldly holidays, yeah, we stay away from it because we fear the Lord. And the Lord said to stay away from those worldly things, you know, being a, a witch and a ghoul and a goblin, you know, being a vampire, being a demon, that shit is not, it's not fun. It's not cool. You know, oh, it's for the kids, it's for the kids. Yeah. So, so, so throw them right along in the lake of fire too, right? And that's what's going to happen <laughs> because, you know, even though they're doing it in the ignorance, a lot of these children, you know, they don't know. But what happens is that they grow up to be demons themselves, you know, and then they push the demonology better. But it starts off, they know that the, 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 the elites, they think in terms of generations. They don't just look at the here and now. They're like, well, if we raise a whole generation of demons, then the adults that come up, they'll be demonic and we can easily control them because they're under a demonic vibration. They're under spells. The same people that celebrate Halloween are the same people that are going to go take the jab because that's just what the world does. And the world will go after, you know, the, the, the scripture says um, the birds, man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but you know which one I'm talking about. The, the birds resort to their kind, roughly paraphrasing. Uh, yeah, I believe that's in um, Sirach. You're talking about every animal, every beast take it to his life. Yep. Just like just like um, people, wicked people congregate together because they, they do wicked shit. You know, and those that are striving to do better, that's why. Why do you think we congregate? You know, the, the, the unifying factor, because guess what? Uh, you know, we have love for the brotherhood, but a lot of us, we're not necessarily like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with this brother or this brother. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm best friends. No, this is about we serve the Lord, so that is our unifying bond. You know, we serve and we do love to congregate with the brothers. But the thing that unifies us, you know, we this is not just a get together and we just having fun and chilling. No, it's the unity is in the bond. The bond of unity is in the fear of the Lord. We're like minded, so you know what? I know this brother is going to be on the same accord as this brother, and I can put my wallet on the table and nobody going to touch it. You see. Because we all fear the Lord. This brother ain't going to be celebrating Halloween. So he can relate. You know, the fan that your family coming against you and creating problems for you. I can relate to that, too, because we all go through the same thing. But again, driving back the point, not to be too long winded, we're going to get right back onto Joel, too. But the fear of the Lord is the difference between us and these people that are going to be on the other side of the, this uh, on the other side of this day of darkness. All right. You got that in Philippians? Kind. Uh, this is Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because mm -hmm. Paul was basically saying, uh, you know, like he's getting on the Philippians, but he's also saying that don't just do it because I'm here or, you know, when I'm gone, you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Same thing with this truth, you know, can't just be, oh, I'm an angel when the elders are around, you know, I'm an angel when, the, when I'm around the apostles and the brothers, but then in your personal life, you're a full fledged demon, you see? And that's why a lot of guys fell out because they thought that just being around the brothers and I'm going to ride this man's coattails into the kingdom. And, you know, no, we got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's why. At the end of the day, you know, if our family's like, I had one of my family members reach out to me about voting today. And I told him, it doesn't matter who you vote for. America's doomed. This society is doomed, you know, and that's just that's just a basic common sense. You don't even need to be in the truth really to see that. Plenty of people that are out there that ain't even in the truth. They see that America's doomed. So I told him, why, why would I bother voting? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would I waste my time? You see, but again, that's part of being a part of the world. So we got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't worry about what they're doing. They're going to be over there celebrating Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. They're of the world. You know, they have been blinded. There's nothing you can do. Once you start hitting them with them facts, though, they'll, they'll be quick to press you on some shit. Once you start hitting them with them facts, they'll watch them change the subject. You know, but they want to drive by. You know, that's that's a drive by ignorance. You know, I want you to follow this. But the second you got your rebuttal, oh, let's talk about something else. No, stand on that. Stand on that same energy. But 
getting to the point, the fear of the Lord. All right. The fear of the Lord is what drives us. The fear of the Lord in the back of our mind, even in your everyday life. Certain things happen. You'd be like, man, I, I know the Lord is judging me right now because I'm not doing something that I should be doing. That's all part of the fear of the Lord, man. You see, the fear of the Lord is our motivation. It's our it's our driving force. See, it's a it's a it's a major uh, force behind, you know, the main force. The fear of the Lord is the main force. That's the beginning of wisdom. The first thing when you see the coming to the truth, I remember just seeing the, the missiles and the judgment that the Lord about to bring that fear entered in me immediately. I'm like, what do I need to do? Lord, whatever you need me to do, I'm here. I'm, I'm paying attention now. You got my attention. What do I need to do to be protected from this? I want to be saved. I don't want to be a part of this destruction and, and death that's coming. But if you don't fear the Lord, you don't respect him. And if you don't respect him, you're not going to believe in him. And if you don't believe in him, there is no judgment then. One, one of the scriptures says he would neither do good nor evil. So that means he just... Uh, you know, a complacent God, a God that a passive God that he does watch it. Everything is happening on the earth. And he ha he's not passive. He's very active and he's so active to the point where he controls every single interaction that happens upon his earth to the very every last word that I'm saying right now to the to every word we're going to speak, you know, through the spirit of the Lord in this lesson. That's from the Lord. The things these people celebrate in Halloween. Guess what? The Lord got them doing that. He put ignorance over their eyes so they can't see. So again, driving back the point, fear the Lord. We can get to uh the rest of Joel too. Uh, but, uh just real quick. Oh, God damn, one second. Mm -hmm. All right, so, okay. yep. Um mm -hmm. no, I just wanted to say real quick, every piece the same Lord's one, somebody watch this video and Lord's one that be of the elect, they wake up because your testimony that you just gave is exactly what I want to bring out. In this uh, lesson with Joel, the second chapter, especially using the uh, imagery that we're going to use from the first video with um, uh, Independence Day, just to give you a visualization, because like the brother said, he heard about the missiles and things like that, like what we're going to get into with Joel, because Joel, the second chapter, is a prophecy about the missiles in America, right? It's just written in allegorical speech, right? It's just written in a way that Joel never saw missiles before. Joel never saw things flying out of the sky. So he's trying to explain it in his mind, during his time in his modern way the best that he can. And in this modern time now, seeing how the Lord is giving us the understanding, we're going to use videos like just like what the, uh, the elder brother Manasseh Zakbanyamin does with his videos and things like that to bring to life. Like he'll play, he'll have the videos playing. Yeah, play. so, so like the, the sound again. Yeah. Is it good now? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, like when you speaking and then you pause again and try try speaking again. Is it good now? Yeah. For some reason, it cuts back in. That's saying. That's saying. Cause it's never happened before. Yeah. If it happens, I'm gonna just put my hand and you and you'll know. All right. Block it. Damn. That I'm going. I'm saying. And now, I got, but basically, just wanted to see that. That fucked me up. Right you mentioned Manasseh Zak and those videos. Okay. That's why I cut up. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Basically, you see when he plays his videos, how he'll have the. Uh, the scriptures, uh, you know, the vocals of the scriptures, and then you have visualization in the background. That's what we're going to do today with, you know, Joel, the second chapter. So I'm happy that you said, I'm happy that you, the spirit had you bring out Philippians 2 and 12 as well. Like, I'll read it one more time where it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. When we go through this, you know, whoever here, and even ourselves, that the Lord give us the spirit to, you know, work out our salvation more and more. That's right. That's right. Back in Joel 2 and 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even right. to the years of many generations. Gotcha. So when it says people, it doesn't mean that this is actually people coming. It just means that Joel is using, you know, again, his during his time, his modern time, during when he was living, to explain what he is seeing. He's likening the missiles unto like an army coming. As we're going to use, I have the brother has a Independence Day to explain something and also a clip from Troy, right? Now imagine it actually like, you know, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but imagine actually like an army coming to besiege a city. 
and how they're all coming there. He's likened unto that. The mist was coming through, hitting America, likened unto an army attacking a city and completely devastating and destroying everything. As we're getting ahead of myself, like I said, but like the one scene that we have with Troy, when they, at the end, they're just coming through and destroying everything. That's how the mist is going to come through. They're going to come through the wall and just hit up every single place. Nothing is going to be left alone. One second. Just give me like 2.5 seconds. Yeah, all good, all good, all good. Got something straight. Joel two and two again. Oh, was I was I, was I muted? You you were muted when you said oh, okay, okay, okay. no, but I kind of like I didn't I didn't have to hear it. I saw your face. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Joel two and three. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as 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 the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. All right, this is the part where let's get uh, the NLT version of that, and then let's get the video just to explain now, just to give you a visualization. Yep. Don't forget to uh, share the screen as well, Baruch Shah. Mm -hmm. Joel 2 and 3 in the NLT says, fire burns in front of them and flames follow after them. Ahead of them, the land lies as beautiful as the Garden of Eden. Behind them is nothing but desolation. Not one thing escapes. So now let's get the uh, Independence Day. Mm -hmm. right? And to show you, you know, I think the saying is what? Uh, life imitates art, if I'm not mistaken. So these elites know the day of the Lord. They know this is why they show you in these movies. Because they always show you destruction. and bad It's like, why is that? Is it good now? I can't. Fuck. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Damn. Why does that keep happening? Yeah. I don't know. But um, in the movies, these movies that these directors bring out, they always show you America being destroyed and things like that, right? So, pretty much these elites know that you know the, the day of the Lord is going to be pretty much the destruction of America. Yep. So it says, uh, ahead of them lies. The, ahead of them, the land lies as beautiful as the Garden of Eden. Behind them is nothing but desolation. Not one thing escapes. Yep. And then people might say, well, oh, Babylon the Great is wicked. How is it like the Garden of Eden? But, you know, talking about, you got it again, like the brother always, Shalom always be mentioning visualization. From the missile standpoint coming down, America is still a beautiful place, man. You know, it's still got a lot of green, a lot of forests. Like when you look at it from space, you just see like mostly green, you know, because of uh, just like acres and acres and lands and lands and lands and states worth of just a lot of trees and vegetation and, and, and wilderness, you know, but that is where it's like compared to the Garden of Eden. But again, it's going to be made desolate. And uh, before we get the video real quick, this is how you know, again, this is a spiritual thing because in the previous verse in verse two, where it talks about an army, now it's talking about fire following. It's like, so hold on, army and fire following. So it's like, what's up? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's, it's Joel is likening unto an army. The same way, like, imagine you see, like, we're going to go into it. I'm getting ahead of myself. A whole army standing is coming. you like, oh shit, they all lined up. Who's got to look at It's the same thing, like, Isaiah the 13th chapter says when they see the eye from their face, they're looking up and they see a whole bunch of bright lights coming down. You're going to be the same way from the old set. What the hell is that going to be going on? Yep. That's right. So another thing that uh, reminded me of is uh, the flame following after them. You know, you have the jet fuel, you know, the, the rocket fuel that's propelling them. When you look at the visualization, you got literally flames coming out the back of the missiles, too. And before them, you know, which means wherever they land, you're going to see that fire as well. Uh, back in, um, you want me to go back to the KJB? No, we can uh, get the video real quick. Oh, the video on um, Independence Day? Yeah. And uh, just quick, again, this is uh, for, uh, I forgot, I haven't done it a while. Uh, copyright. This fair is, use. Yeah, fair use. This is just entertainment purposes. Hey, y'all cause crazy guys anyways, right? We just... 
doing something, you know, doing our American right. All right. This is fair use. That's right. That's right. All right, boom, let's go. You want to write right around 1.30, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't forget to show your uh, screen. Yep. All right. You can hear it? Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. All right. So, Lockie, I saw 144 on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right? This is fair. Hold on. Let me see if I could get the, the frame where I had it. Let me see. There you go. Look at oh, that. Perfect, perfect. See? Of all the, my, of all the uh, you know, because that's uh, fractions of a second. And of all of them that showed, 44 popped up. I mean, come on. I mean, that's the deliverance of the elect with them with that destruction. I got Wisdom of Solomon too for that, but let's let's play the rest. Time's up. Uh, pause it for it. Because uh, when he said time's up, that also makes me think of uh, if I could find it in Job. Uh, where is it? Oh, perfect. Yep. Job 14 and 5. Yo, the audio. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, let me see what this makes to in a different channel. Maybe if you had headphones, it might help. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Hold up. Let's try to stay away from it because I want to hear what they're doing. Yeah. Or you could have, like, maybe one off the ear and one, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, let's see if it helps out. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have uh, Job chapter 14 and verse 5. It says, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So just like the guy said in the, uh, you know, I forgot what the character's name was in this movie, but time's up. When Yahweh returns with the armada of angel, that's it. Time's up. There's no, his kingdom is not going to last any second longer. Mm-hmm. Esau, your time is up. Moabites, your time is up. Ammonites, your time is up. You know, uh, who else? Who am I missing? You know, Hamites, Ishmaelites, Elamites, all you heathens, time is up. Starting with Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. So all you heathens, your rulership is up. No more Halloween, no more bullshit. <coughs> going to be righteousness on the earth from this, from that point forward, all right? So, so that's what y'all got to look forward to, slavery. Sloppy, bro. I'm just like, what did these dumbass people think was about to happen? Like, <laughs> like they're sitting there, like, what are y'all expecting? Pause it real quick. Now, I was trying to find the perfect clip, but I just don't want to miss the point. This is what Joel was seeing in his prophecy going back to when we read it in uh, the NLT. Uh, could we get that back in the uh, mm -hmm. NLT real quick? Yep. It, what, what first came to mind with this with this joker right here was um, their faces shall be as flames. Right. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll get that while you get the. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's Isaiah 13. Yep. All right, so uh, you want me to get Joel 2 and 4? No, the uh, third verse again where it says uh, the fire follows them in the NLT. Okay, yeah, uh, Joel 2 and 3, fire burns in front of them and flames follow after them. See, right, and when you saw the what, the flames, what, you saw people running away. So that's mm -hmm. what Joel was seeing, but you see with this movie, it's just, the, the, which in the movie it's aliens, but we know when your house shot comes back, they're not aliens. He's coming back. This is the son of the Heavenly Father coming back with the angels, like I said earlier the armada of angels. 
So it's not just going to be one blast coming down. It's going to be 200, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 200 million uh, missiles coming down, warheads coming down, and every single part of this. And while you have that, it hits the ground. It's going to have that explosion, a sonic boom. And what? You're going to have people trying to run away from the flames like you're seeing here. But what? As they're running away, like Joel said, uh, can you read that one more time, Bob? Fire burns in front of them and flames follow after them. Right. You see like this guy here, fires burns in front of him. And then the ones that are running away, fire is following after them. And that's what Joel is talking about. That's mm -hmm. what he's uh, speaking to here. And that's why I want to use this uh, Independence Day as a visualization that this is what, or at least to some degree, this is what the day of the Lord is going to be like. You heard the screaming and things like that. That's why I'm happy you actually played the audio because at first I didn't want to play it. But you heard the screams, the women's ah, and all that type of stuff. Yeah, you're going to have people losing their mind. Uh, I'll get for you Isaiah 13. But like you mentioned, their face shall be as flames. It's good because you can actually see in the uh, the windshield, if I'm not mistaken, the fire coming to it. Look at his face. The yeah. shock, the just the utter like, mm -hmm. damn. That's so spiritual, man, because it's like literally the reflection of the flames is on his face and his face is inflamed because of shock and fear. Right. Uh, and what are you going to do at that point? It's just impending death. Uh, let me see. Where is it? I think this is it. Oh, yeah, yeah this is it. I'll start verse six. <clears throat> I'm good, right? The audio is good? Yep. Okay. This is Isaiah chapter 13, verse six. How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the almighty. And that's what we're seeing here in this movie, right? Although they're using aliens, but we know the actual thing is Yahweh Shai returning on that chariot. Therefore shall all hands be faint and every hand, I'm sorry, and every man's heart shall melt and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed at one another. Their faces shall be as flames. Mm -hmm. Their faces shall be as flames. So, I mean, there you have it. When you go into that word, let's, let's, let's actually get the word there for flames. 13, right? Uh, yeah, 13, I've read uh, verse 8. All right, so... Yeah, look, 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 man, and the NLT is cold. And people are terrified. Oh, I'll read seven. Every arm is paralyzed with fear. Every heart melts and people are terrified. Pangs of anguish grip them like those of a woman in labor. They look helplessly at one another. Their face, their faces aflame with fear. So there you have it. One moment. Salakia. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna read this right here real quick. It says uh the word for inflamed is lahab, lahab, and it says flame, flame, a flashing point of spear or blade or sword. Yeah. Like their faces, like when a, like when you see like a, sh a sword that's glistening, their faces are going to be like into like a the glitter, you know, the shining of the flame, you know, and also their faces being inflamed when you're in fear, especially Edomites, their face get all red. You see? All right. So there you have it. Go back to uh, unless you have something else on that, where you want to go back to the video. Yep. Sucky. Sucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, you want to go back to the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. There's a little bit more in it, showing more of the it following them. Yep. Uh, pause real quick. So like you see how they were looking back. That's what Joel was seeing. The flames following after them. But they're not going to be able to escape if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me read it actually real quick. Just to bring it to light. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if I may, it, it just shows you how the most high controls all these movies, man. Look at this. This is a, this came out in 96, nearly 30 years ago. And they still had, even back then, the technology, the special effects. Like, this this is a bad fucking movie, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. This movie's a bad fucking movie, bro. You know, and psh, they, they don't even make movies like this no more, you know, at, the, at this scale. You know what I mean? And this is 30 years ago, you know, because... Things have cheapened over time, but man, this is a heavy, heavy movie because this is one of the closest visual um, expressions of how that destruction is going to be. Pause. Like the scriptures say, I believe that's Isaiah 14, shall sweep it with the beast of destruction. But you see, that's just going to be a part. Remember, this is 200 million missiles, so that's going to be everywhere. So imagine that, but everywhere. I mean, everywhere, just encompassing. You see how the flame is just going like that, spreading? That's how it's going to be. Except it's just going to be just one hitting. Like I can't point at it so you can see, but like if you're looking at the video, like the... Uh, the top left side, you see how it's kind of clear over there? No, imagine another flame just going like this, spreading across. The back uh, right side, imagine another one just hitting everything across. The the front left and the front right, just flame just going and expanding all over. And just yep. constant, just boom, 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 boom. That's why it says here, let me just read it. In Joel 2 and 3, a fire devoured before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. And behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. See, when this destruction comes, nobody's, how are you going to escape that? The only escape, as you can see right there, is up, like brothers say. Because what? The chariot, which is that, that UFO that they call it today, but we know as the chariots of Israel, is going to be the only way that you get escape from that besom of destruction spreading across the entire land. Because look, it's spreading all over. You can't escape that. So the only way is up. But a lot of people don't, a lot of our people don't believe in that. They think of what we're saying and it, like, you know, like, I'll just be honest with you. My pops is in the next room. I'm pretty sure he's hearing me saying this right now. But they look at this as foolishness. This is like, uh, yeah, this is nothing, but this is something that's going to happen. Just you wait and see. Mm -hmm. That's right. I got, I got something real quick because this visual just... See when you have the visual, man, like a lot of things come to mind. I'm going to just get straight to the point with this. But Second Ezra 13, right? Okay. It mentions. Um, are you, huh? are you paying attention to No, you can go. You can go. Huh? Are you Second Ezra 13 and are you, are you 6. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. I but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was great, and I could not. You see, so this chariot was so monumental that it looked like a mountain, all right, that was just out in, you know, up in the heavens. All right, so he looked for, where, where did he pull, what mountain did he pull off the earth to, to, to chop it out, to ride up upon it? You know, but again, we know this is a chariot. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid that yet there's fight. So, so yeah, they're going to get in them. Um, you know, them airline, you know, Will Smith ain't going to save you, all right? That's the point. You know, I, even in the movie, like, when you think about how they actually, like, how they were over to able to overcome this, like, come on, man. that That's just, that's the Hollywood act. That's just the nonsense of, like, yeah, you know, get in there and somehow there's going to be no hope for anybody that comes against the Lord, all right? Only the elect is going to be delivered up in, into the chariot and change, change it to immortal bodies. And there's going to be very few inhabitants on the earth left. The scriptures even says that. I think it's in either second age 15 or 16. But, you know, that was the point. All right. That was the point. So we'll play a little bit more of this. What was that, L.A.? Uh, I'm not sure. Because I seen palm trees. I'm doing something right now. What does she want? A 
obliteration. So yeah, you get the point. I mean, that's pretty much. Yeah. See the visualization. I'll talk to you after I'm done doing See something. But yeah, that was there on that. At least on that part. Now we could get into. God damn, it's hot in my room. But um, we can get into the uh, save the uh, other one, Joel. I'm sorry, not Joel. Um, the Troy video. We mm -hmm. can continue in um, Joel. the rest of uh, Joel. Yeah. All right. So back in Joel two and four, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they. So shall they run. Right. Again, see, now it went from being an army to then fire. Then now it's horsemen because Joel is trying to use his modern terms to explain it the best he can. So he's likening the, the missiles unto arrows because like he sees that what these things are moving fast. So what's an animal or a creature that moves very fast? Horses. So that's why he's likening it unto a horses. Mm -hmm. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Right. That's how you know that this is a vision that he received, because he's he's even describing the sound of it, right? He says like the noise of chariots, right? Which uh where's my book at? Uh, hold on, let me get this real quick. Right? Now you sometimes watch the movies, right? And sometimes you'll hear like uh the audio hasn't cut out neither, right? No, nah, you good. Oh, okay, cool. The audio I'm sure. sure. So I'm going to try to do this the best I can because it's been a little while. But you know, sometimes when you watch the movies, like just use an example, Lord of the Rings, any of them old time movies where men went to war and things like that. And you'll hear what? You'll hear this. Lord, let me know if you can hear this clear. Right? And that's why I'm trying to imitate the sound of horses and things like that. But imagine a whole like hundreds of them and things like that. It sounds deep. It sounds loud. You can hear from far away. It's like, oh, that's the city. So that's why he's likening it unto what? The noise of chariots. Because when these missiles come, they're also going to be making noise as well. But he's, it's not actual chariots, but he's likening the sound of it like chariots. Like imagine a bunch of this coming to a city. But it's not actually this sound, but he's likening it unto this sound using his modern uh, terminology to explain what he's hearing in the vision. That's right. I got some right here real quick, right? Mm -hmm. I found this dude all through the spirit. Check this out. Oh, perfect. So you get a feel, you know, it's loud. It right. Just commands attention. Right. It's going to be something. Right. Imagine you hearing that from far away. Now, imagine the missiles are going to be high in the atmosphere. So when that comes into this, into the earth, right back into this, uh, the earth's atmosphere, I mean, sorry, back uh, over here, it's going to make like a thunderous sound, something that's going to have to uh, get your attention. The same way if you hear this, you're going to be like, hey, what's that sound? What's, what sounds like that? Then you go and you hear, oh, it's a bunch of horses. And stuff. imagine that, but it's in the sky and just hear, boom, and you like, and then you see a bunch of just dots in the sky. And you see it coming closer and closer, looking all fiery. That's pretty much what uh, Joel was seeing. Yep. And uh, remember, those those nuclear weapons, man, like, man, if I could, I want to see if I could grab a clip real quick um, from this video about the true scale of modern nuclear weapons. Did you see that? Uh, no. Yeah, this one is heavy. And, and some of the, like, the Satan in one and the Satan two, are like look like a 10 15 maybe 20 story building imagine that traveling through the sky at hypersonic speed you know and it has multiple warheads you know i'm gonna try to get right to the point you know again fair use you know hopefully we have no issues for this but i wanted to get one clip Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Check this out. This is going into I think the Satan Satan two. Range exceeds eighteen thousand kilometers, or over eleven. Let me get to the where it mentions the hole. Yeah. <coughs> the Sarmat is a three-stage liquid-fueled missile that weighs over two hundred and eight tons, and measures over thirty-five meters, or about one hundred and sixteen feet in length. 
It's capable of carrying a variety of warhead configurations, including up to 10 heavy MIRVs or 15 lighter ones, along with advanced countermeasures to bypass missile defenses. Its range exceeds 18,000 kilometers, or over 11,000 miles, allowing it to reach targets anywhere on Earth. One of the most concerning features of the RS-28 is its ability to utilize a fractional orbital bombardment system, or FOBS. This means the missile can enter a low Earth orbit and approach targets from any direction, including over the South Pole, effectively bypassing traditional early warning systems that are oriented toward the North. Some reports speculate that the Sarmat could theoretically carry a payload of up to 50 megatons, equivalent to the Tsar bomber, the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated. While such a massive yield is more hypothetical and not practical for modern military use, now look at that. That's Mount Everest right there. Can y'all see that? That's Mount Everest right there. And now look, these are the scale of weapons up until today. That is multiple times taller. That nuclear bomb is multiple times, that nuclear uh, mushroom cloud, I should say, is multiple times bigger than Mount Everest. And that's what the Russians got. The Satan too, to decimate Esau's kingdom, which is under the vibration of the spiritual. <coughs> I mean, the Most High is controlling everything, man. Why did they call the missile the Satan too? Come on, man. Because Satan is the one that has tricked them into doing this, which is under the you know under the uh, orders of the Most High. Imagining its potential impact is sobering. Consider a scenario where a fifty megaton warhead is detonated over New York City. Blow you the trumpet. It sounds like a trumpet going off with them with the alarms. Boom. We read it. The day of the Lord is darkness, not light. The immediate fireball would engulf an area with a radius of over five kilometers or over three miles, vaporizing everything within 83 square kilometers or 32 square miles. The intense blast wave would cause heavy destruction. That's one warhead. One warhead. Oh, a missile that has multiple. I mean, come on, man. It's about to be here. Yeah, it's a, you see why it's going to be a desolate wasteland, man. Right? The line of confusion. They're not going to be able to even tell well, where was this. This is New Jersey, Connecticut. This is where Queens and Brooklyn was at. And nobody's going to know. It's just going to be a one giant desert. All right. But yeah, that was pretty much it on that. Unless there was one more part. Oh, yeah, this part at the end where it kind of shows you like them all going off. Seems that Russia might not be as formidable as many once thought, but merely a paper type. <coughs> Yet in a full scale nuclear exchange, even a few missiles. They try to downplay Russia. They said Russia is not as formidable. It's obviously like an element of propaganda to this. But yeah, in the whole. This is the elites like kind of showing their hand of what they intend to do because the most high put the spirit on them to do it. And again, they think they're going to go into the bunkers and escape. All right. But we keep telling you that Yahweh Shai is going to come and he's going to take his elect up and they're going to be turned into gods. All right. Immortals once again. And they're going to come and get you out of those bunkers wherever you hidden. All right. And even then, a lot of them bunkers ain't even going to be able to save you because the scripture says that this uh, it will burn. It will burn the foundations of mountains until the lowest hell. That doesn't mean actual hell. It's, you know, there is no actual hell, you know, where they think of where you're going to burn forever. No, it's talking about America, the lake of fire. And it's going to burn into the lowest, meaning even deep into the earth, you're going to have, it's going to be burnt. You see? It's from Russia's nearly 6,000 nuclear warheads. Look at that. All over decimation 
And they're going to make sure. They're going to make sure they finish the job, man, because the Lord going to put the spirit on them to do it. And America's going to fire what they have at Russia. America got a whole lot of nuclear missiles, man. And actually, the, the true number is classified, right? So they're going to fire what they got uh, against Russia, okay, and other targets, okay? Here, we can go back to Joel, too, unless you have something to say. So this is Joel 2 and 5, like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Right. Yeah, see, he's liking all these things, liking them to an army, right? Because it looks like an army coming to the, to the place to destroy it. Yep. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Pretty much straight to the point. I mean, pretty much like a example of that, like we had earlier with the uh, guy in the car, you know. Yep. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march everyone on his on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Right. So they're going to hit the intended target. Right. They're not going to no air, no missile defense system is going to stop this from hitting the place right because uh those missile defense systems are made to either uh shoot down if i'm not uh there's two things i forgot what the other one but i know it's one is to shoot down and i forgot what the other uh thing that the defense uh the missile defense system is supposed to do but this is not going to you know like imagine the army actually on their way to uh you know uh, uh attack a city or whatever and it's like, oh, something deters them or makes them break their ranks or makes them scatter. Now, this is not going to scatter. It's not going to make the missiles go a different way from their intended path. No, they're going to go to the intended path, which is America. And we're going to have also, uh, just want to go a little bit further, but uh, going to get a Detroit movie just to explain to you, you know, what uh, Joel is saying here about, you know, pretty much like men attacking a city. That's how much, uh, what it's going to be like when the missiles hit America. Yep. All right, we can continue. All right. It says, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Yep. Continue so, to verse nine. Yep. Those missile defense systems ain't going to affect them, like the brother was just saying. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Right, so this is where I want to play the uh, Troy movie because it says what they shall run to and fro in the city, right? <clears throat> so we can get that uh, example there in Troy. Mm -hmm. You want to play it from the beginning? Uh, uh, let me see. You could go forward a little bit, at least when it shows the men, like just the, all of them just going yeah. through the gates. Yeah, okay, maybe like a minute in, I think is good. Let's see. Well, pause it real quick. That's perfect right there because what? They're sleeping. They're unaware. And that's how the people are going to be when uh, the missiles come. They're going to be unaware, not as suspecting this to happen. Mm -hmm. Horses galloping too. Oh, okay, it's kind of hard for me to see. Let me see if I can up the bright. Is the brightness? 
Yeah. Okay. Right, pause it real quick. Right, but you see how the men just came through the city gates right on or uh, right on their ranks, just about to what uh, do now what uh, death as you're gonna see when we continue to decimate the city, just hit up and kill up everybody. And that's pretty much what the missiles is gonna do. It's pretty much gonna hit every part of the city. Like you see how they're gonna go through the city and not leave anybody alive and stuff like that? That's pretty much how the missile is gonna be. The same way when we had that clip where you saw the ring after the uh the chariot uh pretty much hit the beam down. You didn't see nobody ain't escaping that ring of fire that it had there. It's the same way these men is like. They're going to go, like it says, to and fro in the city. They're going to, to and fro through the city. The same way the, uh, the missile is going to be. That fire is going to go everywhere, hit up everything. Like uh, when, we, when you've seen certain clips in the Independence Day, how it was burning up the building. It blew up certain buildings and things like that. You had a guy in the office building. Hit him up too. That's how the missiles is just going to travel and go everywhere. Just like an army is going to travel and go through the entire city and wipe it out completely. Getting it in right there. I don't remember yeah, that. You saw it? Yeah, yeah. Damn. Me. I don't remember that at all. Shit. Yeah, Isaiah. Matt, well, we, we since we got it here, I, I might as well pull it up. Um, where does it say in Isaiah 13? Let me see. Damn, homie's supposed to be killing the city. Homie said, nah, fuck that. I'm getting me one real quick. <laughs> Damn. Yep. Yep. Let's see. Yep, Isaiah 13 and 16. I'm reading the scriptures, all right? This is NLT. Don't get mad. We're just reading what the Bible says, all right? This is the judgment that's coming, okay? Their little children will be dashed to death before their eyes. Their homes will be sacked and their wives will be raped. There you have it. That's when all hell breaks loose. That's what's going to happen. That's why scriptures say, tremble ye women that are ease. Rise up, ye careless daughters. Many years and many days shall you be troubled. Why? Because the coming days, the, even before the, the, the nuclear destruction, all hell is going to break loose. They already have, if I'm not mistaken, I think I've seen an article about it, how they're releasing certain guys from uh, prisons and things like that. What do you think some of these men in prison, they haven't seen a woman and things like that. And some of you women, what a lot of women, I think Elta Zion made this point. I remember when I was like first coming up in the truth. That a lot of you women have a lot of scampy clothes. You have a lot of revealing clothes. You don't have clothes that can cover you up. So in the time of Jacob's trouble, all you're going to have is this skimpy, tight little clothes. And then what? That's going to, even in them days, it's, that's going to appeal to a man. Even though, you know, we, we know how women going to be. They might be bloody and things like that, smelly. But in them days, I mean, look, we just saw the clip with the dude. Here it is. You're supposed to ransack the city. And homie said, like, yo, listen, I'm taking one round. Mm -hmm. So in them days, it don't matter if you smell it. Men going, it's gonna be like Jake says, demon time. Mm -hmm. like, I don't care if you smell it or that. It's demon time. I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. Especially a lot of these men are incels. They never had none. <coughs> Military men have been stationed. Like they have been, been haven't had a woman in years, maybe, maybe for their whole life. You know, and women just been flashing it, flashing the goods in front of them. But they know that because of this wicked society. You can do that. You can dress like a whore, but you know, and you can go and tempt men and do all this shit, and there's no repercussions. But now, a lot of them motherfuckers that you was flashing the goods in front of, and they they about to mark you up. You know, they about to they about to get get what they want from you. You know, and don't come crying to us in that day. I 
All right, but we could pause it. I'm like, damn. I I, I got to watch Troy again. I remember this. I got to watch that movie again. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically, just to give you the visualization that this is pretty much like what the missile is going to be doing, right? It's not going to have no mercy. It's not going to consider anything like that. This is the judgment of the Lord. And when he brings that fire, that fire, like it says in Isaiah 14, shall sweep it with the beast of destruction. It's going to spread up through the whole land of America and destroy up everything, men, women, and child. Right. The Heavenly Father is not seeing flesh as, oh, that's a that's a, you know, an a a elderly man or, oh, that's an older lady or a young woman and her kids. No, he's seeing spirits. Elder Tazlam says that he's seeing spirits that are not uh, that are disobedient. The flesh is nothing to the side of the Heavenly Father. So it's like oh, he can give you another flesh. So I'm going to just burn all of these. He's going to burn up all these disobedient spirits of our people. And then, you know, the nation will start anew through the elect. Mm-hmm. But we could uh, go back to Joel. I think the uh, point was made with at least, you know, for at least me the, with the two videos. I just wanted to mm-hmm. show those. But we could just read, like, I think it's like. Kind of uh, like 11. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, one, one more thing I wanted to mention when it says they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. That's talking about the windows from on high, you know, the heavens. Because like, like, we, like, we like we went into uh, that video before. It said that they're going to stay in a certain orbit and there's certain parts of the earth that they can send the missiles through to where they won't be detected by a lot of systems anyways. Mm, okay. See, so they're going to enter in at the windows like a thief, you know, they're going to enter in in a place where, you know, what you, you can't enter through the front door when you're a thief. Sometimes you got to enter in through like a back way or like a, a place where, you know, there wasn't as much security. Everybody locked the door and do that. But did you lock your windows too? Because <laughs> everybody, you know, Everybody don't think like that. They're thinking, oh, well, I secure the front door, the side door, the back door is good, so we're good to go. But then there's windows. There's other ways to get in, right? And we know those windows are talking about coming from the heavens, all right? The outer atmosphere where the missiles are coming from, all right? It says, the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Right. I just want to mention, going back to that video, you played a little bit earlier how the mushroom cloud, at least the technology today, can make that, you know, so big and so high in the sky. That's pretty much what, like it says, the earth shall quake before him. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the same book except the 24th chapter where it says the earth shall uh, reel to and fro like a drunkard because mm-hmm. all these missiles hitting America is going to cause the eight to shake and to, uh, to quake. And then what? The aftermath of the missiles hitting America is going to leave that mushroom cloud like the brother showed in his uh, video earlier. Yep. And uh, also the sun and the moon being darkened, you know, which it represents in a spiritual sense, their, their knowledge and their wisdom being, you know, failing them and them having a lack of knowledge and wisdom. Uh-huh. And also... Um, yeah. One actual, second, I'll be right back. So I'll go ahead, do you think the actual sun and the moon and stars will be darkened? Um, because we know there's going to be nuclear winter after that, so the whole you know, the whole atmosphere is going to be filled with smoke, so you're not going to be able to see the sun and the moon and the stars. All right, reading on the 11th verse, and we're going to close out on this unless the brother got anything else. But it says, And the Lord shall utter, utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong. That executed his word. And what is his voice? All right. His voice is his servants, the prophets. So they are declaring that this is going to happen. All right. For his camp is very great, for he is strong to execute his word. For the yeah, his word, you see, he is strong to execute his word. Who's reading his word? The prophets. All right. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? You see. Back, I'm, I'm gonna read it one more time for you, uh, Joel 2 and 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong to execute his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? All right after that visualization, especially more so with the Independence Day, who can abide that destruction, that fire following you everywhere? You, you uh, pause the video at the right time with the guy in his car, and you can see half of his face with fire on it. Right. Who can abide a day like that? Do you think in that movie, although it's a movie, right, they're supposed to at least give you a visualization, you know, in that movie of what it would be like, you know, although it's a movie. Do you think that any of those people when that destruction came abided that? So how much more Yahweh Shai when he comes back, when the Heavenly Father, excuse me, 
sends back Yahweh Shai with the angels. That that's gonna be a sight to see. The giant ship in the sky. You're gonna see other chariots all around, right? The brightness of his coming, the illumination, it's gonna be very bright, right? His chariot's gonna be bright, you're gonna see him. Whether I don't know if he's gonna be on top of the chariot or in this chariot in a way that you can see him. And you're just gonna see this bright illumination, this big thing in the sky, and then out of nowhere, just missiles start coming and just what? Fire all over the place. That before even the missiles come, that's going to be a scary sight to see the Lord. Because people are going to be like, what the hell is this? Like, what's going on? Like, people are going to be confused. But we told people, the elect have been telling people like, yo, this is the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is darkness. Nobody's thinking of so-called, and I say this in quotations, so-called UFOs being in the sky. But it's not UFOs. It's the salvation of Israel. It's the, it's the, it's the Lord, Yahweh Shai, coming back to save his elect. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's mind-boggling because you'd be looking around at these people like, man, y'all, y'all know, like, y'all not aware of like what's happening. Like, y'all not, which we know according to the Bible that they would be blinded. But sometimes we'd be like, yo, like, it just goes to show the power of the Heavenly Father that He's literally showing them signs. The news is constantly talking about World War Three and Russia and Iran and Israel and America, and China and all these different powers that's going at it, and it's like. They and they these people watch the news like they're watching and following about uh, the election, so they have to be seeing it. But somehow it's like it's just, just right. Slock here real quick. Actually, mm -hmm. what's the Jeff Goldblum? The guy he was in Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. Um, the guy that said "Times Up" in the Independence Day movie. I think his name was David in the movie. And actually, it's funny that you're saying like you know how people our people can't see. He was actually warning the chick and the president about that before it happened. But, you know, obviously it was too late. He was actually trying to warn them about, yo, because he found out somehow he was able to get into the aliens code or whatever and find out how they're synchronizing all that. And that's why he had the timer to know, like, OK, they're synchronizing their this account down to something. So he was actually trying to tell them that at first they weren't listening until it was already too late. That's why they were in such a rush at the end to dip. Mm -hmm. So it's you know just made me think of that like you're saying you know we're warning our people because he was actually in the movie trying to warn them and his name is David too if I'm not mistaken, right? House of David, the House of David is warning them. It's all spiritual and they be doing that on purpose in the movies. They'll be having like biblical names and certain people, you know, they'll say, well, this movie has religious undertones because it'll always be something biblical. Even in a lot of horror movies and different things, you know, there's angels and demons and things like that. And the protagonists and you know they have to follow the light and conquer evil and things like that so you know it's always that's why it's always a good versus evil thing you know the scripture says good is set against evil in the book of Sirach. you know but yeah a yeah, beautiful point beautiful point so i think we're good on uh we're done with uh joel the second chapter you got anything else no that's it just wanted to like i said just bring out the visualization through, you know, the Independence Day movie and the uh, Troy movie, just to explain what the scripture is saying, just to bring it to light, you know, that's all. Lord's Wing has been edifying as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to read uh, this one last thing. I'm going to read um, Joel 2 and 32 to close this out. And it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So it's, um, remember, you know, call on the name of the Lord, Yahweh, and his son's name, Yahweh Shai. And even when the Lord brings out these heavy scriptures about destruction, he always gives us hope. All right, so we don't bring this out just to give you a sense of doom without hope. You know, there is doom, but there's hope for those of you that repent of the nation of Israel. Right. Actually, uh, since you mentioned that, I do have one precept. Mm -hmm. um, I always forget this. I think it's Isaiah 35 and 3, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think I could be wrong, but I think it's Isaiah 35 and 3. Well, now that you mentioned that, now I got. I remember <laughs> I had a precept. <laughs> Isaiah 35 and 3? I think it's that. All right, kind of. Yep, Isaiah 35 and 3. Yep, that's it, yep. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. 
Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Right. So although the scary times are coming, the Heavenly Father is going to come and what? He's going to come and save you. So when you hear these things, that's why I want to bring on. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Because hearing something like that will make you weak and, you know, make you, because, you know, weak hands, like imagine like your hands are shaking and your knees is buckling and shaking too. So that's like what you're fearful. Hearing this type of stuff is, it's supposed to put fear in you, fear of the Heavenly Father. But what? Strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that have a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even the most high with the recompense. He will come and save you. And who's the the uh the he that he's coming to save is the elect. Lord's willing, we be a part of that number. So although the uh I know it says it also in uh I was just reading it, uh Sirach, the second chapter, I think it's the 26th. I'm sorry, not Sirach. Second Ezra is the second chapter, I think it's like the 26th verse. Be not weary of the uh of the day of uh be not weary when the uh the day of uh, trouble and heaviness cometh cometh. Others shall weep and be sorrowful, but ye shall have abundance, roughly paraphrasing. So, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord is gonna provide a way for his elect. Lord swing again, we'd be a part of that number, right? That uh, you know, he's gonna provide ways for us to get out through this tribulation, although we're gonna be in, you know, that walking that tightrope, but the Heavenly Father is gonna what keep us balanced so that way we can make it through. That's right. So now <clears throat> I want to get uh one more. Uh, for me, at least, unless his brother has any more, but uh, Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 7. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies. Because remember, Jeremiah 16, we, we don't got to get it. But, you know, I could quote it that there's going to be, you know, the, the ancient Passover is going to be overshadowed by this, uh, you know, paraphrasing it by this modern day Passover. And in the ancient Passover, it was the salvation of the righteous, which is the Israelites and destruction of the enemies which are the egyptians and the modern day egyptians are these americans okay for wherewith thou didst punish our adversaries by the same thou didst, didst glorify us whom thou hast called yep so there you have it punish our adversaries the same way that this punishment of our adversaries that same thing that is a punishment and doom and fearful to them is the glorification of the Lord's people, all right, which is only going to serve to glorify his name, all right, because the Lord said he's going to save us for his name's sake, okay, because he's not a man that he should lie. He said that he's going to save us, and that's why it's good to call the Lord into remembrance, which he doesn't need us to call him into remembrance of it, but it's just a symbolic thing to call the Lord into remembrance of uh, of the promises that he made to us. You know, Lord, you said you were going to save us. Lord, you said you know, according to this, if we repent and we call on your name, you're going to deliver us. You're going to protect us. So remember those things, too, you know, and put the Lord into remembrance. The scripture says, give him no rest. All right. Be 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 like that nagging wife, you know, in righteousness. Yeah, I think we're all experienced about how a woman can nag you. So do that same thing to the Lord. You know how your woman be. A, do that same thing to him. Mm -hmm. That's right. Give him no rest. Lord, every day you're going up, Lord, I need help. I need to be saved. You said you was going to do it for us. You know, we're waiting patiently for you. You know, we serve you to the best of our ability. You know, we try, we, we, just, we striving to do better, to repent, to become better men. Lord, save us. We need help. We fucked up out here, you know, in this wicked ass kingdom. You know, we ultimately we're good, but y'all know what I mean. We're suffering. All right, the Lord's taking care of us, but we still suffering, man. So we need to get the hell up out of here, you know. And Lord's will, the election is in like a couple days. Well, the last day of uh, voting is in a couple days. Shit is about to get turned up all the way, man. So stay locked in, brothers out there. That's yep. it. That's it. That's it. All right. So Lord's will, this video has been edifying. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Again, double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom. Shalom.